Hello everyone, welcome to this UK Data Service webinar on getting data from the internet. Your presenter today will be Peter Smythe of the Cathy Mash Institute for Social Research at the University of Manchester. Uh, thank you, Jill. Um, in this webinar, <coughs> what we're going to do is look at ways of getting data from the internet. Um, we're going to cover four different aspects in pretty short order because there's quite a lot to get through. So we're going to look at copy and paste, the simplest of them all, downloading files either singly or multiple files um, using programming techniques, um, using APIs that is more of an example than rather try to rather than trying to explain what an API is but we'll, we'll cross that as well and then finally we'll do a little bit of genuine web scraping very simple stuff but something which actually produces something and I say at the bottom there this is very much demonstration based there's not, there's not many slides um, it's mainly going to be demonstrations so just just to make it clear this is not a webinar about finding data on the internet it's kind of assume you, you know where your data is or, or you found it yourself and you're, you just need to get it from the internet onto your machine for you to use um, it's as much about using the, the, the techniques and software tools that we're going to use to download. Some of them are just going to be your browser, that's fine. Uh, but we're going to use some um, coding techniques in Python and a few other little tools as well. We're also going to use Excel. So with the exception of Excel, all of the tools that we're going to use are going to be open source tools, so they're freely available. And the justification for Excel is it, it's pretty ubiquitous and quite useful as well. So starting off with copy and paste. So if you just want a small amount of data, um, uh, um, uh, an article or, or a table or something, you may find it easy to just scrape, um, just cut, cut, copy from, from the, the browser screen that you're seeing and paste it into a Word document or an Excel document or whatever. The slight caveat is that what you get isn't necessarily what you see on the screen, and I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. And not only that, depending on what browser you're using, you can actually get different results, uh, some better than others. Um, for tables, Excel may have a better alternative. So I'm going to just go through some of that now using a table. This is the um, BBC Sports page, and here we've got the Premier League table which has looked like this for about the last six weeks, probably. Okay, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is the table, this is the information I want, so I'm just going to scrape this table by selecting everything and do the control C to copy it. Now you notice that, as I scrape that, you notice that some of these things at the top, the, the co um, column names, aren't it's like highlighted like everything else, and neither are the team names, okay? That's a bit, um, a little bit worrying, but not the end of the world yet. So let me just open an Excel, blank Excel worksheet. And I'm going to paste it in. Okay, so I've right mouse clicked. I've got paste options of paste um, to source formatting. Well, that doesn't look very good. And the destination formatting, which is a lot better. Okay, so you'd probably go for that one. Okay. And if you look at that one, you can see um, at the top here, those column names are in fact missing. And perhaps what is even worse, if I go to the team column, all of the teams are missing. So this idea of just being able to cut and paste a table doesn't necessarily work too well. Now that is using um, the browser here, which is the Firefox browser. Um, if I just close that Excel spreadsheet, don't want that again, don't save that. Um, I actually did a, a little test on all of the different browsers which I, I had available to me. Um, the Edge browser which comes with Windows, Firefox, Chrome which is also easily available and lots of people like to use. And if you just look at the different formats which I come up with, so on the Edge using, I, I did it with both source test, source pasting and destination pasting. So we get source pasting with edge. Now this seems to have given a different result this time because here I've got all of the uh, the teams in there and notice all of these are filled in as well. 
edge destination looks very similar except that these are no longer links as they were the firefox source uh, yes lost teams lost um, column headers destination very similar for chrome similar sort of things none of them are, are absolutely perfect probably the edge source is about as close as you're going to get but even on the edge source if you look at these column names up here these are the ones which seem to disappear and if i go back and look at the um actual page in firefox so here i've got played one drawn lost whereas in my spreadsheet it came up as pwdl etc so again, you're not always getting what it is you think you ought to be getting. So instead of using the straightforward um, copy and paste, what we can do is, assume we want to put this into Excel as a table we're going to look for, uh, we can go into, into Excel, um, go to data from web in the get and transform data. Um, this is available in all of the, all of the Office 365 um, versions of Excel now, I think. So, providing your Excel is reasonably up to date, you should have this available to you. And you just just get a little form asking you to put a URL in there. And so, I'm just going to um, go back up here, copy my URL, and paste it in. Say OK. And this will go away and get that whole page, which actually had more than the table on it. But it knows I'm probably looking for a table. So when it comes back, it will actually present me with options and saying, well, you know, what table do you want? Okay. And it's not very good at labeling the tables, but you can get previews. So if I go to table zero, I can see this is the table I want. And then all I've got to do is click on load. And then it will put all of the data into the table or into the spreadsheet. It does actually format as a nice little table. You've still got these extraneous things which you probably didn't want. Team has moved. And this stuff at the end, which was the little graphics, are still the same. But this is generally um, a lot cleaner table if I delete that. Oops. Uh, I'm not going to bother cleaning them. But you can see what part is the table and which part isn't the table. Um, and that's a far cleaner way of, of importing tables from the internet. Use Excel directly and import it that way. So, um, back to the slides, I think. Copy and paste, demo. Cut and paste doesn't always work. Use Excel because it's generally better. Um, that is just what I've shown you. That's good. Make progress. Right, downloading files of different types. This is um, a situation where, well, again, you've probably all done it, where you, you, there's a link which says download or download here, or this is a file name that you want to download. And you can just click on it and directly download it, and it goes into my document or something like that. There are other tools. If, you haven't, if you're not using the browser, there are um, software tools. Uh, wget and curl, which are um, Unix-based um, options. Uh, they don't naturally occur in, in Windows, although there are ways of getting hold of them if you want to use them. And alternatively, the other software too is, is actually write it in, in Python code, or it could be in R code, but the, the demonstrations I've got today are all going to be in Python. And the advantage of using the code is that you get better documentation and reproducibility. Because if you just clicked on a link in a, in a web page and downloaded the file, you've got no record of, of how you got that file and, and so on. Um, if we're into coding, um, we can also automate um, the download. So if we wanted multiple files, we could find a way, perhaps, of downloading them all together. Now, automation isn't always going to be possible. For example, some file, some or locations put UI, UUIDs in the path or other randomness. And what I mean by that is strings of hexadecimal numbers which are part of the file name or the path in the file name, which it makes it poss impossible for you to predict um, what other files in the series might be. 
Uh, another problem might be if it's using JavaScript functions. So these are typically the, the buttons that you press to download a file because that goes away and, and runs some JavaScript to do the download. So you can't, we, we need something where we can actually get hold of the file name that we're actually trying to download. And if we've got the file name and the path, we can do a fair job with automating some of this. Um, and and this, this approach will also work for a lot of API calls as well. Um, so, demonstration again. Let me just escape out of that. Um, for all of these demonstrations, I'm going to be using um, mainly Python uh, in the form of JupyterLab. JupyterLab comes in the Anaconda release of Python. It's already built in there. It's very useful, not only because of the Python environment, but it's got nice lots of little tools as well to help you, you do things. Um, I'm not going to go into the um, actually downloading by clicking on a button and just downloading it to my documents because we've all probably done that before. Um, I, I'll very briefly show you the command line tools and hopefully deter you from using them unless you happen to be a, a command line user and you, you've used them before and you know what they're, they're going to do for you. Um, as I said, these the, the wget and the curl don't occur naturally in, in the windows environment but are various ways of getting it uh, and windows 10 there is a, a linux subsystem which will have them in um, for our demonstration today i have got um, this little thing called moba exome which is actually used for remote accessing um, other systems but as part of it you get this little linux terminal session in here um, and here I, guess I just type in a command and it's going to run the command. So what I want to do is just demonstrate wget. I think I might just limit myself to wget. I'm just going to copy that, go back to my command. And you can see here, this is the command I'm going to run, wget. I tell it what it is I want to Oops, I've got two commands at once, say. Let's just get rid of that. Um, wget, what it is I want to want, get. This is going to be a web page. The, the minus O means the output, and I want to call it bbcget.html. Okay? And if I just um, run that by clicking enter, hopefully it goes away, it gets it. 100% it's got it all and it's told me it's saved now I've also got open somewhere here I think is uh, the folder that where it saved it and you can see here BBC wget HTML quarter past three and if I double click on that it will just load it in the browser but you can see it's not a very good representation of the page. Most of the page is, most of the information on the page is there. What is missing is all of the um, the the graphics. Now that doesn't always occur. It depends on how the page is being constructed. Um, some pages will download graphics automatically. Some don't. If I just look at the other one, I could do exactly the same thing in, in curl if I wanted to. I won't bother you because it's the same result. The other one I want to show you is this one here. Wget. Um, and what this is going to do, it's going to go to this. Um, this is actually an API. Um, the API at the beginning there doesn't actually mean it's an API. It just happens to be an API in this case. And effectively what I'm going to call is I want to get hold of all of the football competitions that this API knows about. We're going to be using this, this API later on, okay? But at the moment, this is just going to give me a list of all the competitions. I know this gets returned in a format called JSON, so I've cleverly named the file .json just to make it obvious to me. And again, it goes where it connects it. Oh, waiting for a response. Hopefully that's going to come back and eventually get me some output. Uh, I'm not waiting for it. Have I got a... Yes, I've got an example that I've run previous. Oh, no, that's the same one as, as over it is. Okay. 
that should come back and, and, and give me a file but we don't need that at the moment that's really just to demonstrate how these things work um, control V oops control C to get out of that and forget about it and the other thing I just wanted to show you um, for those of you who haven't used um, these tools before if I look at the help file for wget there is an awful lot of things you can do with it an awful lot of parameters so as you can imagine it's very large very flexible very but very complex so my advice would be that if you if you're not naturally a command line user you're it's nice to know about them but you're probably better off avoiding them and instead what we're going to look at is using um, similar sort of techniques only using Python. So in here, this is my um, Python environment. This is Jupyter Lab. Um, one of the reasons um, I use Jupyter Lab, uh, particularly in this demonstration, is that along with able to being able to run all the Python, um, it has lots of little file viewers, which makes it easy for us to look at results. So I can look at the CSV file by clicking there. We'll come back to that one and even the JSON a JSON file it will format JSON very nicely or very conveniently for you to read JSON um, is what API's tend to use and an API is really designed for a computer to talk to another computer or a program to talk to a program so naturally speaking the JSON isn't particularly well formatted for you and I to read um, but there's lots of tools around which will format JSON to make it easier to use. So in order to use um, our, our um, Python, we're going to need this library called requests. Again, requests is built, uh, it's automatically installed when you download the Anaconda version, otherwise you can import it yourself. Um, and then this will allow us to download and save files of a variety of formats. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to set up a, a, a URL variable, and in there I'm putting this string. Now this, you can probably tell by the last bit of it, .csv, it's going to take us out to, um, or it's going to uh, connect to a CSV file, and I'm going to save that with this file name here. Okay, so I'm just going to run that, and then that's there, there's your setting variables such as Python. Here, the, this is the actual call using the request library. We're just all we have to say is get, which is the method name, and pass it the parameter of the URL that we want. And then I'm just going to print the status code, and then I'm going to save the file. Open the file, close the file, write the file. So R is, is a, an internal object which will contain everything which comes back from the request um, part of that is the status code which we might want to look at um, the content is effectively the, the file content and there's lots of other things which we may or may not want to look at so if I just run that hopefully it comes back and it tells me the only thing I printed was a status code of 200 this is what we're looking for 200 means okay everything worked okay um, other ones which you're, you're likely to come across are the, the 400 range, so 404 being the most popular, as I mean, file not found, but 403 is forbidden, you're not allowed to have the file, 500 are server errors and so on. So if it's 200, that's good, and you can carry on. Uh, and just, just the other thing, one of the things we can look for is, just out of curiosity, the URL itself, our dot .url, is what is the file name that we asked for okay and we can see here um file just refresh that oh come in the wrong file folder that's why if i go back into single files there's my file which i've just downloaded okay um i'll just quickly do the others so i've got copies of these I just want to demonstrate that, that this technique works for virtually any type of file you want. So this is going to be the JSON file. It's the same file I, I failed to download a minute ago using um, wget. Here, yeah, I'm just going to run it again. Again, I've got 200 coming back. And 
we can see here competitions Jason and again um, we've got a nice little um, way of looking at all of the results all the competitions okay we'll come back to using Jason later on we'll look at the APIs and finally an HTML file uh, so here I'm going to bbcbusiness.html and um, I, I picked this a couple of days ago I hope that file still exists um, so that's just setting up the the variables run it come back as 200 um, BBC business HTML and I'll double click on that again because it's it's um, Gupta Lab, it's got a nice little presentation of the the page, including the graphics in this case. It's not quite this, quite the same format as you would see in um, if I'd done that natively on on the screen here. I, I think it's actually the um, the mobile version because of the little hamburger up here, which takes me down to the options. But it's a it's a live page, and I can move around it. So. I'm able to download files at any type using simple code. Okay, and, and I think you'll agree this is far looks. You know, you just give it a URL. It's a lot simpler than trying to use wget or, or curl. The next thing we would do is is take that a step further. And having got one file, uh, we're going to look at. Oops, we're going to do look at some multiple files. So we've already seen that slide. Um, the idea here is we want to find a way of identifying the files, so like in bulk, if you like. So back up to Jupyter, uh, and now I want um, for this demonstration we're going a little bit topical. Multiple files using COVID information. Um, so this, this website here, getthedata.com, is, is very useful. Lots of various types of data, but they've obviously updated it very recently to include COVID-19 um, data. And if you go to that um, that link, which I've probably got up here, it's got all manner of useful information about you know, stuff that would rather never existed, but never mind. Um, it covers all of the UK in different areas and what have you. And if, if you go to the bottom, it's got a whole load of files available for you to download. Okay, and if I click on one of those files, I'll get the usual thing. Oh, do you want to save this file? Blah blah blah. Okay, so this is a normal save type dialog. What is interesting about it is that up here it says cases by blah blah blah, exactly the same as I was clicking on there, um, and it says which is from https www.getthedata.com. Well, that doesn't quite match this whole URL up here. So where exactly is this data coming from? Now, if I'm going to just use this dialog box to download one, I don't really care, I'm just, as long as it downloads it. But it would be nice to know where this file actually comes from. If I just close that. If I um, hover over this file, Right down in the bottom left, which is very small, so you probably won't be able to read it, it does actually give me a little graphic saying what that file name is really called. And what you see down there is the file name that you really need to be downloading, the full path and file name. The trouble is, it's not there, it's not that plus that, it's, it's, it's something else. And so you've got the options of, oh, what can I, can I read that, write it down, copy it somewhere, what have you. Uh, rather tricky, but there are other ways of doing this. It's almost full screen. Okay, now all modern browsers are very sophisticated bits of software, and they will allow include all kinds of tools for the web developer. They'll all have this. Is sometimes just called developer tools or web developer, or whatever, and they will all have this thing called inspector. And this is pretty scary if you haven't seen um, HTML before or web pages before. But within within the set of tools, there is an item called inspector, and there's this one here, which is also an inspector. They tend to use a similar symbol to this, and it's also on the left-hand side. 
And if I click on that, oops, if I click on that it, so it goes blue, then when I move into my web page, which is up at the top, it gets this little gritty type situation and highlights individual elements. So I can actually highlight that one file that I want. And if I click on that, what happens is down below where it's showing the HTML code, it highlights the line of HTML which is which puts that bit on the screen, if you like, puts that into the web page. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm just going to copy that. Uh, notice if I go down to copy here, I've got options of inner HTML and outer HTML. So again, going back to what we did on our, our simple scrape when we weren't getting the same information as we thought we were scraping, this goes some way to explain that you've got inner HTML and outer HTML. And what we're interested in is uh, outer HTML. And I'm just going to put that whoops, into, a, into Notepad so we can see it better. And what we've got down here, this is um, uh, an HTML tag. It's called an A tag. And A tags enclose links. So this is the A tag. This is the end of the A tag. And everything in between is uh, related to the A tag. So what we've got here, now that is actually the, the um, inner HTML, and that is what you see on the screen. What we've got here in this parameter called href is actually the file it's going to try and download. Okay. Now the fact that it's asking an HTTP at the front of there it means it's a download relative to where we're starting from. Okay. So I can use this information along. I mean, if this was just an HTTP, I could use it directly. Otherwise, I could use it in conjunction with that information to work out exactly what that file name is. And once I've got that, I can start downloading. Back to, to our um, workbook. So you can see here, I, I've just written it up. I've, I've done exactly that process, and I've constructed this um, file name. And here, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. Um, all this code is exactly the same as we've seen. And if I run that, let me just run requests first, otherwise it'll fail. If I run that, um, I didn't print out the URL, but you can see up here, that's a, a, I show you that's a new version of the file, and it looks exactly the same as the other one did. But what we're really wanting to do here is download lots of files together. And the way we can do that is by recognizing the format of these file names. They've got dates in them. That's good. Dates we understand because we know what the next date is going to be. We know what the previous date is going to be. So in this next little um, section down here, this is just a little test section. And so what I want to do is try and construct um, URLs corresponding to lots of dates, i.e. lots all of the different file names. And at the same time, um, I want to store these somewhere. So I'm also going to create um, uh, the name of the file I want to save. And if I ran all that, what I would get is this output here. So you can see at the end here, Everything is the same until I've got 16, 17, 18, 19. And that's just a little bit of looping um, Python code. And similarly for the output, uh, the data, the output files I'm going to produce, they're, they're 16, 17, and 18. So we can use, just put it, because we know the structure of the file names, we can create a little loop which will iterate through and get all of the files. And then we can put it all together in our little loop, um, 1632, if you're a Python person, you, you understand that means starting at 16 and ending it at 31. Um, the stem is the same, um, or oh, the little F type at the end, dot .csv to name all the files. And then all the code in this loop is essentially exactly the same as we, we were running before for a single item. But this time it's going to loop around and get all of the files. And where we're going to put the files, D data, COVID-19, blah, 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 which I've already done. And you can see here in this um, folder, I've collected all of the files from 16 to 31. And they're all individual files um, all for each different day for the, what, two, those two weeks in, in, in 
March. So the next thing we might want to do, having downloaded, you know, half the battle is being able to download multiple files, but the real problem is that we're probably going to want to put these all together at some point. So again, we can do this using Excel. Um, and here we're going to go to data and we're going to say get data from file and specifically from a folder. Just make this a little bit big. Okay. I can browse where the folder is. Uh, where did I put it? Data COVID-19. Uh, it's a folder at once. I'm just going to select that folder, highlight the folder and say OK. It's then going to tell me what it's found in that folder, a list of all of our files. We knew that. What we want to do is combine these files, so the little box down here, combine. I don't want to do anything else, just, just combine them and load them into my spreadsheet. I'll do it eventually. Um, it shows you a little preview of the first file. Notice the other three columns that we had in all of the files, all the same. Obviously, condition of this is that they tend to have to be the same um, column names. A bit bigger. Uh, eventually, um, it creates a query, which is doing all the hard work, which you don't have to anymore. And then it puts all of the data from all of the files into your spreadsheet as a table. And you can see what it's also done for us, which is very useful, it's actually put the file names in here. So they um 16th, if I go far enough down, I get to the 17th and so on. So all of our data is in there, and then you can start um, doing whatever it is you, you might want to do. Oops, insert, pivot table. Um, we will have um, the names in the columns. We want the source name, which is actually the file name, but in our case, it really represents the, the time, the date rather, and then total cases down there. And this will, for each of those dates, it will give us all of the, the values from all of the files. And if I just restrict this, um, to a couple, um, once I do, I did, oops, you can pick any ones you want, so I thought Kingston upon Thames and Kingston upon Hull are quite diverse locations, uh, select that, insert, chart, um, line chart, And there you can see a little graph comparing the two together. Okay, so we, we started off with setting out to download multiple files. We've stuck them all together in Excel, and then we can use um, normal charting type things to draw nice little graphs. And you see, so, so each point in these along here all come from different files that we've downloaded. Okay. Moving on, because time is pressing, uh, we're now going to use an API. Um, APIs, always read the API documentation. It's very important you know how it works because it might have restrictions on it, um, like the need for keys and how many calls you can make in a period of time. The one we're going to use, um, you do need a key, but it's free, um, and there are some call restrictions. Back to our demos, football API, football. What we're going to do here is um, we're going to start off with a very similar approach. First of all, I'm going to show you um, what JSON looks like. I'm just going to import my um, libraries up there. Uh, we're going to use the, the requests module again, just as we are doing before. Uh, and this time it's a little bit more more complex in that in addition to having the URL which is all we needed before because the this API requires you to have um, 
an API key, we need a way of specifying that. And to do that, we use this headers um, parameter. And in there, we say this is our authentication token, and that is the value of my token. You can all get your own tokens, all free. There's nothing hard about that. And we can also, it also include things called parameters. And what we're going to say here is match day equals one and season equals 2018. Now, I just want to, um, because I, I insisted that you all, we all do it, um, let's just go back to, um, this is a website for the football data org, uh, get your free API key, API documentation. And if you go to the quick start, it will show you how to, what can be got from it, how to use it, and it's got examples and, and things that you might want to do. So this one up here, the V2 competitions is effectively, you don't need a key for this one, you can just download it, and that's effectively the call I made when I was downloading files before. That gives you a list of all of the competitions, and you, you need to know that because competitions are worked on numbers, and if you want the Premier League, you've got to know what number it is. I presume that's why they give that free. Uh, the other uh, thing I just wanted to point out in this is um, if you go to pricing, Although there is, there is a free option, oops, at the bottom of it, it tells you, this is the free option, 10 calls per minute, okay? You have to bear that in mind, otherwise it will stop you. And, and, and other um, APIs will have similar kind of restrictions, potentially. Certainly Twitter does. So, back to our code. We've done the libraries. This is our simple code. If I am um, just show you what JSON looks like, I know we, we sort of had it before. Um, at the same time, I'm going to save the file because you want to limit your time using using the internet, what have you. So downloading the file and saving it is, is usually a good idea. So I'm going to print it and I'm going to save it at the same time. And if I run that, oops. You can see what I'm seeing here is nicely formatted JSON. This indent form makes it nicely formatted. And you can sort of read that and see where things are and see all of the information that it's bringing back for you. I'm just going to clear that. Um, if you, oh, the other, oops. If you want to know what JSON really looks like, it's that. And that's totally useless to anyone. You couldn't possibly use that in any practical way, which is why all you usually end up with tools which will um, which will um, format it nicely as I. So the next thing we we'll do is, is use the same approach as we were doing before to get multiple downloads, because um, you'll notice that in up here, I've said match day equals one. Season, I'm going to keep the same. But if I go from match day one to match day 38, I'll get all of the matches from all of the games, um, or all of the match days. Okay? So here I've got MD1 one, uh, one to 39. So again, that's 1 to 38. I'm going to loop around, and each time I'm going to get the, the data. Okay? Now, this is I'm not going to run this because as we've just noticed that if I try to do this 38 times and I'm only allowed to do it 10 times a minute, it's going to fall over. I'm going to get stuck. So what we're seeing here is just the, the results of the prints where I ran it previously. And again, you can see exactly the same way, match day equals 1 right up to match day equals 38. So I, I correctly formulated the URLs I need, and then we just need to run it. Um, now we need to pass JSON to extract the bits of information we've got. So if you remember up here, I saved this file, one of the files, games.json, and I've got that there. So if I look at games.json, um, this was just the, the first one I did, so it's only one match day, match day one. But you can see here, in here, I've got bits of information like the match day, and I've got details of the matches. Um, regular season, I can get the score from that, 
and I can find out who the home team was and who the away team was. Okay, so all of the information I need from the, the the match is available to us, including the referees if I wanted the referees. Yeah. So what bits are we going to extract? Well, I guess what we're going to try to do is create a football uh, a league table. So what we're interested in knowing is the score. But let's start with the match. So um, what we're going to do is the, the response which came back, we're going to put into a variable, and we're going to use that variable to extract from it the matches. And from the matches, which we know there are 10 of them, we want the first one. So that's zero again, uh, because this is Python. And then what we're going to do is progressively, I'm going to show, not going to go through all of these, but we're going to drill down and for each of these, um, we can drill down and extract more and more precise information. So that's the, the full-time home team score and the waiting tool. So that's the score. And down here, I can get the half-time scores and I can get who the, math, who the, the teams were. Just as I was um, highlighting in, in here. Okay, but this is using program code in Python to do it. And then what we want to do is just save them into a CSV file, and this is the code that's going to do that. Uh, this is just pure Python, it's not, nothing to do with the API, we've already done all the API work, that's going to do all of that. And then I'm going to use this piece of code towards the end, right at the end here, to actually generate a football table. Okay, unfortunately I've already got these here, so if we look at the results CSV, you can see here, these are the items which I extracted, the match day, the home team, away team, home goals, away goals, half-time score as well, okay? And what from that, the last bit of the code in there, actually, uh, oops, the last bit of code generates a table. So again, that is just simple Python stuff. So from that data, which I downloaded across 38 different API calls, I can recreate the 2018-19 Premier League table. Okay? If you're interested in football, you may find that fascinating. If not, well, it applies generally to lots of other things as well. So finally, um, APIs we covered. Uh, real web scra scraping. This is where it gets a, a little bit trickier. Um, we need suitable tools. Uh, in Python, we've got this uh, package called Beautiful Soup. Again, installed as part of an Anaconda. You need to know a little bit how HTML works, but not a great deal. The most important thing is the one I've, bit I've already shown you when we're looking at the inspector. You need to be able to match up what's on the screen with the underlying HTML. Okay. And the tool for that is the inspector, as I've just shown you. What we're going to do, we're going to use the, um, we're going to try and create, get some information on Tesco stores. Okay. Now, Tesco, like lots of other stores, they have the store locator. And if you go to the store locator, um, you can put in a, a code like M13. And it comes up with a little map. Let's pick one of these. View the store details. That'll take me to the actual web page. Now, each of the stores has a web page, and they all look very much like this. Little picture, uh, image, map with the, uh, the pin in it, and various information about the store itself. And what I want you to note is up at the top here, in the URL for this, it's got this number in here. Whoops. 6778. Okay. And again, we're going to use that in the same way to find multiple stores. So, for example, I've got some example calls here where I have to change the number. I know those two exist. I'm pretty sure that 999 doesn't exist. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and extract um, for multiple stores, i.e. by changing that number, 
um, various bits of information like the name, address, the geolocation, uh, the store type, postcode, and some other things. We're not going to do all of these. We're just going to pick a few of them. So again, I'm just going to run that to import my libraries. And just a, a, an example of, of how this sort of works is um, before we, we go on to the test of yours, if I run this, um, no, I'm not going to run that for the time. Um, that would be the um, the BBC site again, standard request there. Um, dear me, seem to have missed a line out. Okay, I, I am going to run that just to get the BBC site. I don't mean first demonstration to make much difference. Um, having got the information back, it's now in R. What we do is we create a soup of that using BS, which is beautiful soup, and we need the text. And then we can, if we want to look at it, we can use the pretty HTML to have a little look at it. We won't bother looking at it. All we want to know now is that soup contains all the information we need to extract anything we want from um, the, the BBC web page. And so we can actually, the for loop, we can say find, find all, anything which has a tag of IMG. IMG is another tag, like the A tag and so on. And then it, within that tag, I want you to get the value of the source parameter, okay? And then I just want you to print the URL as that's come out. So if I run that, you can see here just by what's come out, .png, .jpg, what have you. These are all of the um, the images which are on that BBC page. And the one which is probably more commonly done is to find all of the, of the hrefs. So again, we're going to use the A tag, and we're going to look for hrefs. Okay, and you can see all of the links on that BBC page. So when we, we um, I should actually have showed you um, what some basic HTML looks like. So this is a very simple HTML page which I've created, and what the underlying HTML looks like is this. So you can see here um, at the bottom, I've got an example of an A tag with an href in it, and at the top here, I've got heading tags, H1 tags, with some something in it, lists, unordered lists, UL, LI list item, OL ordered list. They can be nested one within the other. There are different ways of creating tables using different tags. And again, just looking at the tables, you wouldn't know what they were. So you need, again, to use... Um, the um, inspector in order to find this. So how do we get the information we want from our Tesco? So here we are actually picking a Tesco score, a Tesco um, site 6367, which I know exists. So if I run that and get that back, um, I know, because I've looked at this before, how do I get the title? It's in H1 title. And I see it's Manchester Oxford Street Express. I want the store ID as well. And again, the, the, the issue here is finding the tags and potentially getting the text from the tag or getting some the value of some parameter within the tag. And, and, and once you've got hold of the idea, um, this sort of thing is, is relatively straightforward. The complication occurs is that Within an HTML page, some of the tag or many of the tags will occur multiple times, and it's the, the real difficulty is isolating what makes the tag unique to be the one that you want. Okay, so here, um, get the address. We're getting all of the H2s. I don't have any of the were, but then I want the text within H2 to be a say address. And once I've done that, then I know that within the next span, which is another um, tag, I want the text, and I know that is going to give me the address. And the reason I know that is because um, I went to the page and I used the inspector. I found the address on. I found the address on the page, and I highlighted it. And this is the the, the slightly. 
indentation or, or the path of, of the um, HTML tags which I followed to find it or it selected for me and then I copied it and just read it off and worked out where it was um, various other ways of getting it um, again here I, I, I use it um, I so I tunnel down to find the, the, the HTML I wanted but then there's other ways of doing it because there is a tag called div um, which has this parameter set class is set to address and then from within there I can find the one which has item prop equals address and text so again it's just a way it just all you have to do is find a way of making what it is you're referencing to be unique okay and then you can get all of it in a similar way the only complicated one is the image that's a bit more involved because the um, longitude and latitude which is what we wanted is really only shown as the 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 pin on the map so you've got to do something very similar again find the image have a look at what's inside there um get the url out which is a call to um google maps or whatever and then extract the longitude and latitude okay do not run this um, and the reason I'm not going to run this is because this is going to get all of the code from 3,000 to 4,000 that's a thousand times um, I've put in here a sleep of five I don't know if that's strictly necessary but it's a case of you don't want to overwhelm the um, the server so be polite and just space them out so that's why I can't possibly run that it'll take far too long but don't worry I've got them already stored in stores here uh, yes, uh, there they all are, which I've done previously. So, having worked out how to get all our various bits, we just need to start putting it all together. But one thing we, we need to be aware of, because we, we commented at the beginning, that we're, we're sequentially going through all these numbers, and some of them won't re be real stores. So, what we're doing here, we need a way of identifying a missing store. Okay? Um, and what we've if I if I put that back to nine 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 and run that, error. Tesco all okay. That's that is what is written in the header or in the title, and because it starts with error, I know it's not what I want, so I'm gonna miss them out. The next thing we can do is put everything into a nice loop, uh, three thousand four thousand. Extract all the bits we want. We're gonna put it all into um, um, a data frame which we can look at and then we can um, the last thing we're going to do is because if I just go back up to there if I look at the store info CSV uh, this is the final version so ID name address last and long came directly from the, the scraping the store type I've extracted from the name and the postcode from the address okay but that is now representative of all of the data that we wanted to scrape this is just extracting the last two items and then finally what we want to do is put it all together so, so, so potentially from our thousand files I don't have any actual stores are involved there I want to put this information onto a map so if I run that I get my little map. Whoops. And if I click on the, the points, oops. okay, I'm going to try and play with it on there. What I've also done is saved it to tescostores.html. So if I go in and have a look at that, tescostores.html. I've got a nice clickable map which I can expand and if I click on an individual one it'll tell me what the store type is and the postcode 